You know, it really is very difficult to ask questions when you're constantly interrupting Mr. Ross. Would you please I'm stop I didn't interrupt you. I'm not speaking to Ms. Brock. I was tempting, but I didn't interrupt you. What is it with SNP MP Deirdre Brock that stokes so much passion within our Douglas Dross? Is it because she absolutely hilariously poked fun out of these two Brexit loons? Or is it because she may bear the self in impulse and he cannot help acting on it? Who knows? But hello there, and I do hope you're all well. And this was in the Scottish Affairs Committee meeting on the 11th of July, 2023. And after Douglas Dross and our Lord offered of Garfield had uh, a bit of a love fest, oh, believe me, the whole room smelt of sweaty sex. It was quite... Ugh, I'll give it that. And they basically just patted each other on the back on how the government had marvellously handled the pandemic. Nobody died, everybody was saved, and uh, they used the money wisely, and everything went fantastically well. And the only person who should be dragged to Traitor's Gate and to be hung, drawn and quartered and have her head stuck on, the, on a stake was Nicola Sturgeon for how badly she handled the pandemic. Well, then after the chair uh, hand, handed uh, it over to Deirdre Brock, all she had to do was cast a line out in the direction of Douglas Dross and see if he will bite and maybe cart from the sidelines. How long do you think it took him before he went... Um, it's interesting to hear Mr Ross raise the issue of COVID because I noted in the first um, evidence session recently of the UK COVID inquiry, um, they were told that planning for a no-deal Brexit crowded out efforts of the UK government um, to prepare minister, for a pandemic, in, uh, which, was something, which was something... Which was something... Actually, I don't know why I'm being interrupted. I said quiet. Oh, on, oh, sorry, I didn't... Can you repeat yeah. that? Sure. Yeah, let's, let's so, Ask Can we start the clock again, that. perhaps, Please, Mr Wishart? Thank Brock, you. Then, the recent really first really. evidence session of the UK COVID inquiry heard that planning for a no-deal Brexit crowded out efforts of the, that the UK government were making to prepare for a pandemic. Uh, preparations for Operation Yellowhammer, I think, were specifically referenced. And that was a point that was echo echoed by the former First Minister of Scotland when she gave evidence at the same inquiry. As a passionate Brexiter yourself, did you have regrets? Did you reflect upon that information and then have regrets about how this was handled? Were there ways that the UK government could have handled this rather more competently? Yeah, I, I don't recognise the, I don't recognise the premise here. The evidence doesn't back this up. I'm afraid. Okay. The evidence is that we had a faster rollout, and we came out of lockdown faster. And our economy hasn't been damaged any worse than the European economy. So I don't understand the the, the premise of the question. We, we, our, our role, uh, our, if I remind you how angry the French and the Germans were that we had the vaccine deal sewed up bef months before they did. Okay, but I think what the inquiry was hearing was that work that was, could have been devoted to planning for a pandemic was not possible because everyone was having to plan for a no-deal Brexit. Well, Surely that's the point. It, the evidence doesn't bear that out. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and just getting on to error and fraud, uh, I noticed that there has been... Uh, the Public Accounts Committee recently came out talking about fraud and error, saying that total fraud and error across COVID employment schemes delivered by HMRC was an estimated £4.5 billion, of which the department expects to recoup just £1.1 billion. Uh, and they criticised the length of time the government was taking to recover those taxpayer pounds. Um, I wonder is that if you'd out of like the to business? comment on that. Is that the business? That's but the you're business. You're representing the, the yeah, UK the 4. government. Yeah, 4.5 billion. Yeah, so that is out of 150, 146 billion of business support. Uh huh. Okay. So what does that work out at? Less so than three percent. So it's about 4.6 percent, apparently. I think that's of the total expended in the three schemes: the coronavirus job retention scheme, the self-employed income support scheme, and the eat out to help out uh, scheme. Um, equivalents. So a new number. Sorry, estimate, your percentage number was how much? 4.6 percent. Yes. I think yeah. Now, Less than five percent. Less than five percent. So that's acceptable, isn't it? I, it's not a case of it being acceptable. Okay. But it's a case of if you run a loan book, for example, if you're a bank and you have bad loans, you are in the in, you're in the same sort of category at less than five percent. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's acceptable, and you don't want it to happen. Okay. But that is within commercial margins of of running a loan book, and when you actually send money to people without them actually filling out any forms, 
without them actually, without you doing any credit checks on them, I would say it's actually remarkably, what, what, I think the lesson of this is how remarkably honest the British people are, actually. Okay, um, but that is a considerable amount of money. What concerns is the Scotland office raising with the UK government about trying to claw some more of that money back? Well, is that something that is yes. your responsibility as someone who's you know, responsible there is for a, business? The, and yes, the, the, there is a, absolutely a, um, a, a review of this going on, um, and it's uh, within the Treasury, obviously, is where the, the, they sent the money out. Um, that, that is under review. It's, it will also be considered in the, the COVID inquiry. Uh, we're not Are you to, on top of it, though? Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, we're on top okay. of it, because as I just indicated to you, overall, that is within the realms of running a loan book in terms of a, a, a bad loan position at 5%. It actually tells you that for, in the main, the money was well targeted and well received and being paid back. Uh-huh. That's not to say it shouldn't therefore be uh, uh, recovered where it can be recovered. But that doesn't sound like you're pursuing it yourself. Is this something that well, concerns it, 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 as you? Far as because I, you I, seem to be accepting it as a sort of you know, necessary the, 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 result of having I, I don't that live money in the de- I don't reside in the department whose responsibility it is to recover sure, the money. Sure, sure. Okay. So, so therefore you need to inquire of that department what the, the precise steps they're taking to recover that this money. This is Scotland but, office ever, and you as a re- representative unit for, for business for the yeah. Scotland office, yeah. do you not feel concerned enough to contact the department yourself? For that matter, the Department of Health and Social Care, which apparently, according to the uh, Public Accounts Committee, wasted an extraordinary £14.9 billion pounds on PPE and related COVID expenditure. Uh, what are you doing to Again, this? Um, the, the, this is uh, an unfortunate byproduct of a speedy response that was required to save 15 million jobs, keep uh, the population in employment, allow our economy to return. There are bad actors, unfortunately, in this world that we live in. But the lessons that we're learning out of this is that the British people in general are very trustworthy, hardworking and honest people. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, of course. Um, but clearly there were some problems here, so they presumably need because to be if addressed you send by the UK that, government. When was the last time you got a loan from a bank where they didn't check where you could pay it back? It's never been done before. Okay. It's the most extraordinary experiment we just undertook to give money to people without, uh, without, without working out first whether we could get it back. And, and guess what? It's been returned. Okay. Um, back in 2021, admittedly, but back in 2021, looking at some of the uh, spending measures made by SNP ministers since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the Scottish Government estimated fraud and error in those schemes to be no more than 1 to 2 per cent of payments, approximately 16 million, appara- uh, 16 million pounds to 30, 16 million pounds to 32 million pounds, which is a significantly lower amount. Now, I, I don't have more Order. up-to-date figures I, I, I'm finding it really difficult to concentrate because Mr Ross is constantly and consistently barking into my ear. Would you please be quiet and let Ms Brock answer, ask her questions, and the Minister respond to them? Order. Ms Brock. So it seems that there were 1 to 2% um, fraud and error... Uh, you know, it really is very difficult to ask questions yes. when you're constantly interrupting Mr. Ross. Would you I, mean, stop I didn't interrupt you. I'm not speaking to Ms. I was tempting, but I didn't interrupt you. Um, <laughs> no, but you're speaking to the chair and everyone else can hear you. Uh, so just getting back to that point. Um, yes, now their estimate was something between 1% to 2% uh, in terms of the schemes under discussion uh, back in 2021. So it just seems that... You know, that seems like a very high amount. If it is around 4.5% lost to fraud and error, how do you explain uh, that? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that the, the Scots had a lower or a higher... Was the Scottish government more efficient in handing out that money than the UK government? I'm, I'm interested in your opinion on that. I haven't seen, I haven't seen, any, numbers to, I haven't seen any numbers that demonstrates that Scotland was any different from from the rest of the United Kingdom. All the numbers that I've, uh, that I've made inquiry of are basically saying that we're in line, UK, Scotland's in line with the UK. Last question, Ms. Brock. No, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but I just found it hilariously funny. No, <laughs> she knows how to push our Dougie Drossy's buttons, but she also made our Lord often look incredibly shifty, incredibly uncomfortable, his body language and his eyes dying all over the place. Telltale signs he was incredibly uncomfortable because, like, let's put it this way, 
this government has no moral high ground on how to criticise other governments on how they handled the pandemic, have they? <laughs> but what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Also, if you enjoyed this bit of Brexit baiting, give it a like. And if you're new to stuff like this, like the House of Commons stuff, or even in select committee meetings like this one in the slot, Scottish Select Committee meeting, get the teeth in, subscribe. Now, anyway, I shall leave the video here before I bore you to death. And uh, take care, my friends, and oh, have a fantastic weekend as well, too.